UFO, an unidentified flying object. It was photographed at Santa Catalina Island in April of 1966. Look at it again, closely. Hundreds, even thousands of witnesses have seen similar things appear in the sky. Persons living miles from others have testified independently that UFOs have appeared in a specific place at a specific time. I looked up in the sky and the object standing real still. And then it was going too slow to be an airplane or a helicopter. It was a large, opaque light. It had a, a dull glow to it. It was larger than a car flying at treetop level from our height here. The official position is firm. The evidence is erroneous, illusory. But if, in 1,000 reported sightings, one-tenth of one percent could be fact, then that is one real existing UFO. Dunning said he'd meet you at the flight line with 412. Very well. Early morning, a summer day. Before it was over, Colonel Pete Moore and five men of the 458th Radar Test Unit knew they would never forget it. It all began with a basically routine but crucial mission involving the alignment of sophisticated airborne radar systems essential to the ultimate defense of the nation. The equipment had a recent history of unreliability. This reflected on Pete Moore and on his men. He was concerned. Okay. Colonel, uh, you'll hook up with uh, Blanco Vista Marine Air at 1200, and once they got you, you'll be designated Shadow Delta One. Are there any questions? No, oh, sir. We've got it. Anything that you'd like to add, Colonel? I know I'll be in touch with Colonel Barnes at Blanco Vista. I'll see you men back here at 1400 for debriefing. 1400, there goes lunch, guys. <laughs> All right, pre flight inspection. Completed. Circuit breakers. And hey, what about the radar? Fixed. They pinpointed it last night. We won't have another abort. Oh, I hope not. And what about the general? I covered us. Oh, you did, huh? Well, how come he chewed me out before breakfast? <laughs> well, this time we got the first team up. Hey, how about some lunch? I'm meeting the wife. Uh, say hello to Nina for me, will you? This mission is going to put my heart through a ringer. Well, you know, from this man, it's going to be more than your heart that's going to be put through a ringer. <laughs> Don't I know? We are cleared to take off. Monitor the throttle. V1. Rotate. at the 458th headquarters, his office. Morning, Colonel. Morning. That was Wing again. They're really starting to press on our roster update. Oh, that'll have to wait. Well, get me uh, Colonel Barnes at Blanco Vista Marina, will you? Yes, sir. I will. Colonel Barnes. 
Hey, Freeman. <laughs> How's it going? It was fine. We're right on schedule. Hey, when are we going to play a little golf? No, I'll get down there one of these days. Uh, hey, don't let your guy slip up this time, you hear? Well, you sound a little concerned. Well, General Enright is on my tail this time. We won't let you down, Pete. Okay, thanks. Oh, I'll leave word where you can reach me. Uh, keep me posted, though, will you? Right. Whitney ATC, this is 412. Verify, we're climbing out. Roger, 412. Amend your clearance. Climb and maintain flight level 370. Engage autopilot. Well, 12 more days of this, and we got 89 days in England. Hey, Ferguson, you ever been overseas? Just Vietnam, sir. Oh, Ferguson. Uh, it's not at all like England. Check hydraulic pressure. 1,500 PSI. Block of Vista Control, this is Air Force 412. Commencing operation, Shadow Delta 1. We are maintaining flight level 370. Shadow Delta 1, this is Blanco Vista Marine Radar Control. We have you passing through our outboard markers. Flight 412 easily assumed its new designation, Shadow Delta 1. As the routine exercise began, Shadow Delta 1 became something else, the hunted. What's that? Hey, Smitty, check with Noran on these. Shadow Delta One, stand by. Shadow Delta One, activate all radar units. Repeat, activate all radar units on overhead scan. Ferguson, Pedritsky, you got that? Yeah, we got it. Yeah, I got the light. There's supposed to be a ground response test. What's going on? Shadow Delta One, check your upper left quadrant. Roger, copy. I'm gonna have a look. This is Blanco Vista Marine Air. All aircraft to this vicinity squawk transponders. Repeat, squawk your codes. Roger, copy. I could. Put it on fast scan. Blanco Vista, this is Shadow Delta One. We see three blips at 11 o'clock. Shadow Delta One, we copy. Unit two confirming. To the experienced men at Blanco Vista Marine Radar, the blips were real. Therefore, what they represented was real. Lieutenant, take a look at this. We just checked with North American Air Defense Command. There's no plot on that. It's not supposed to be any planes in that sector at all. Any malfunctions? No. Hey, what are those things? I'll tell you one thing, guys. Whatever they are, they are pasting us. Shadow Delta One, move up as close as you can within your operational altitude. We're going to scramble for a look. Roger, we're going up. Come off autopilot. Attention, all ready squadron. Pilots, man your planes. Scramble red. Scramble red. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. Set pressurization 42,000. Pressurization, 42,000. The men of Blanco Vista were trained and ready. It was their fastest scramble on record. Shadow Delta One, your blips at 11 o'clock are unidentified. Repeat, unidentified. Norad has no plot on them, and they are not responding to voice communication. All right, we're leveling. Petrusky, give me an idea where these guys are. I can't see things. Uh, ceilings now at 41,000. Targets at 75,000. They're way up there. Way up. Flight of Vista. We're climbing out 20,000 feet. Roger, Tango 1. Tango 2 is confirming. Activating onboard weapons. Petrusky, how do we stand? Uh, speed 500, altitude 42,000, and holding. Tango 1, passing through 25,000. Tango 1, Tango 2. 
We are handing you over to radar control. Roger. Starting attack approach now. Here come the Marines. Wow. Look at them haul. Tango 1, turning now. Roger, Tango 1. I'm on your tail. Tango 1 and Tango 2, approaching 40... Hey, where'd they go? They're gone. The UFOs are gone. Who? What? Nothing. Tango 1, this is Blanco Vista. Come in, please. Over. The Jetski, tell Roy those jets, they never came through the cloud. They're gone. What does Rick say? Rick said that they never came through the cloud. Tango 1, Tango 2, come in, please. Come in, please. Tango 1, Tango 2. Do you copy? Do you copy? Hey, my God. Tango 1, Tango 2, come in, please. Come in, please. Do you copy? Do you copy? And Blanco Vista. What had started as simple routine had become the unbelievable. The men were stunned, shaken. Higher command was notified. contact with your jets, we see no chutes and no debris. We are swinging back to search. Over. That is a negative, Shadow Delta One. This mission is scrubbed. Do not deviate from your pattern. Our people are on the way. Oh, honey, I've got to go. Do you still like barbecuing tonight? Oh, sure, why not? Let's have shish kebab yes. for a change, huh? Well, then I've got to get some tomatoes and onions, onions. and... Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Hey, oh, excuse me, Nina. Uh, Pete, the balloon's just gone up. Our communications people have just monitored the damnedest crosstalk you ever heard. Quote, this is Shadow Delta One. We have lost contact with your jets. We see no chutes and no debris. Swinging back to search, unquote. And what was the reply? Completely unintelligible. Nobody could dig it out. Honey, I, I have to leave. Okay. Mm. I'll call you later. Okay. As Pete Moore left the comfortable surroundings of the base cafeteria, Shadow Delta One was about to chart a course for a strange and unknown destination. Air Force 412, this is NORAD Communications. You are being handed off to Digger Control. Repeat, Digger Control. This is a security transfer. Your new frequency will be Command Channel B. Do you copy? Roger, NORAD. Switching over. Switching Channel B. On Channel D. Digger. Beats me. Hey, you guys, are we gonna stay up here all day? Huh? Looks like I got another bologna sandwich back there, if any of you guys want it. <laughs> you want it, Fergie? Huh? Air Force 412, this is Digger Control. Do not acknowledge radio communication from this point on. Come to course 074, maintain present flight level and airspeed for 30 minutes. Set 074. Zero, seven, four, set. All right, see if you can reach Enright. Tell him we're in trouble again. Okay. I'll raise, uh, 412. Oh, Mike, listen, uh, get a hold of Freeman Barnes, will you, at Blanco Vista? Have him call me. What do I do about this transmission? Read it to the general. Sergeant, raise 412 for me, will you? Well, Colonel, I don't think we can do that. They've been handed off to the North American Air Defense Command. NORAD? When? Just a few minutes ago. We'll try anyway. Yes, sir. 
Shadow Delta One, this is Whitney Communications. Do you read me? Shadow Delta One, this is Whitney Com. Whitney Com, please respond. All right, if uh, Major Dunning shows up, tell him I'm in base operations, okay? Right, sir. Twelve has been diverted to Hollowell Air Force Base, Wyoming. Yes, sir. Diverted. It says right there. This came from uh, NORAD. Yes, sir. Anything else I can do for you, sir? No. Operation. I couldn't get anywhere near it, right? You know, for something that's so hot, we sure seem to be getting shoved on the back burner. And what about Barnes? Something's cock out of Blanco Vista, too. Can't get through. Then we'd better patch it in Norad, right? Pressurization for 150 feet. 
150. As a matter of procedure, Whitney radar tracked Shadow Delta One until it disappeared. Four one two, this is Digger Control. You are twenty miles from touchdown. Yeah. I put it on the speaker. Uh, yeah, do you have a plot on Air Force 412 out of Whitney being diverted from Blanco Vista to Hollywell? Yes, we do, Colonel. Uh, ETA 1430. Well, who authorized that diversion? Well, that's all I can give you, Colonel. I suggest you contact Blanco Vista. Well, I'll do that. Look, we picked up part of a transmission, something about uh, 412 losing contact with some Marine jets. Have you got anything on that? No, sir. Again, you'd better contact Blanco Vista. Very well. Now look, if you get anything on that plane, you holler for me before you holler for anyone else, you hear? Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, contact Hollywood and have Bishop call me just as soon as he gets in. Okay, where do I find you? In my office. I gotta get all the barns. This is Digger Control. You were two miles from touchdown. Hey, Roy, listen, I don't show anything on my charts at all. Just uh, one gunnery range about 100 miles east of here. Well, there's something down there. 412, make your approach from course 105. Repeat 105. You'll be on your final. Touchdown on one way 10. Generators, alternators, inverters. Off, off, off. Battery switch. Off. Let's find out what this is all about. My name's Trotman. Will you come with me? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before these guys haul away my aircraft, I want to know who's doing it. I am. SID. Special Intelligence Detachment. Detached from what? Work for the same people you do, just a different division. Let's get in the truck. and his men did not question their surroundings nor the orders given them. They had been trained to obey, training they would find difficult to contradict.
what it's all about, John. That's what we intend to find out. Riggs, Podersky in here, Ferguson Bishop in there. Shabby officers club. They got air conditioning. They got vents. Well, I hope they turn it on. Yeah. Let them sweat for about 15 minutes, then go. Yeah. Colonel Barnes. Hey, Freeman. <laughs> you know you got a hell of a phone situation down there. I've been trying to reach you all afternoon. Your plane's okay. Yeah, well, we've had quite a morning down here, just getting the pieces sorted out. We had a radio transmission that, that well, there might have been some kind of mid-air collision. No, no, not at all. It's those radar systems we've been tinkering with all week. We just had a complete failure of all ground and air units and their backups. All of them at the same time? Well, that's the way it appears. Actually, your plane has been rerouted to Hollowell. But our people definitely said something about debris in a search. Well, we had two planes up there, too. They've also been rerouted to Hollowell. I see. Okay. Thanks, Freeman. You bet. Come in. Well, that does it. Hallowell has absolutely no word at all on 412. What? I mean, they're not expecting our plane. No time, no how. Well, I just got confirmation from Barnes. Yeah? Where'd he get it? We saw it on the board at base operations. Well, somebody didn't get the word to Wyoming. Radar. Why didn't we go there in the first place? One fifty-eight, Sergeant Pierce. Just a moment, sir. Yeah. Base officer at Hallowell on the line. There's Colonel Moore. Oh, I see. Well, have uh, Captain Bishop call me as soon as he gets in. Hollywood just confirmed that 412 is doing at 1430. It's the middle of summer, and here we are in a snowstorm. You don't think the plane went down, do you? Oh, no, no. Nobody would try to cover a thing like that up. But somebody is up to something, and I am going to find out what it is. Investigation. Nothing you say will be held against you or used as evidence to incriminate you in any way whatsoever. You will now be interrogated by the SID. Ferguson, who made the original sighting? Marie de Blanco Vista, sir. No, oh, wait. Look, you don't have to call me, sir. They ask us to activate our radar and to look at a certain sector of the sky. What did you see? Well, Pedrisky reported three dots at 11 o'clock, and I confirmed. Is that what Blanco Vista saw? Well, yeah, they gave us the coordinate. That's what you reported, but they never said they saw it, did they? <laughs> well, they must have seen something. You see, there's no confirmation on that. Something appeared, and then it disappeared. Maybe it wasn't even there at all. We 
want to know everything you thought you saw. What do you thought? We're getting reports in from the Marines, who are checking their equipment for misalignment. Misalignment? What do you mean, misalignment? They're bringing their radar people in to go over the big dish. They're sort of steam. They don't much like it when things go wrong. Yeah, well, I, I can understand that. I wouldn't either if I just lost two jets. And those Mark IX radar sets? I get stories all the time about malfunctions. In a way, what do you mean, malfunction? Now, something snatched two jets right out of the damn sky. We agree. Three blips appeared and then disappeared. And so did the two marine jets, and they're not supposed to. You saw them disappear? On the radar scope. Get Riggs in here. He saw them go. Well, now that's... Let me tell you something about the reliability of now the look, radar. Now, look. The facts are simple. Blanco Vista saw three blips. We saw the blips. They scrambled two jets. The jets disappeared. The blips disappeared. Now. What are you going to do about it? Now, let's go back over some of the details. What are we going to tell Enright? I don't know. Well, Sergeant? Yes, sir. I understand you were tracking 412 this morning. Did you track it as far up as uh, Hollywell? Uh, no, they went east. East? Yes, sir. Norton handed them off to somebody called Digger Control. Um, what is Digger Control? I don't know, Colonel, but Norton handled it. And did you track them after that? Yes, sir. They turned to course 074 and took off in the desert due east until I lost them. What do you mean you lost them? Well, they dropped off the scope when they got near the mountains. You lost radar contact, and you didn't tell anybody. Major, Digger Control had 412. I only tracked them because they're heading. What do you mean? Curiosity. I've been stationed here 14 months, and I've never seen anything flown through that area. All right, can you pinpoint it for me? Sure can, Colonel. OK. So what, what are you talking? Briggs is standing right here. Now, now, he saw the jets disappear. Why don't you ask him, huh? We're talking about blips. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> Boy. You guys, you really have tunnel vision, don't you? Huh? You really do? <sighs> okay. Okay, I'll tell you how we can settle this whole thing. How? All right. You bring in an expert on radar and an expert on aeronautics, and you let us talk to them. What would you tell them? Well, aside from the most important part, namely that Riggs got a visual on two marine jets just snapping right out of the sky, I saw three radar blips make a right angle turn in midair and move off the scope at about 5,000 miles per hour. Now, those experts could tell you that no known flying machine or bird of any sort can make such a turn, that nothing known to science can accelerate from 500 to 5,000 in one second flat. Now, that is what I saw. You can ask Riggs what he saw. Okay, Clifford, what did you see? I saw two marine interceptors climbing forward of us. Now, they flew into a cloud, and they never came out. Okay, how thick was the cloud? Seven, eight hundred feet. Okay, we have two marine jets moving at better than 900 plus. They should have punched through that cloud less than three or four seconds, did they? Well, I just told you they didn't. Well, what did your scope show? Exactly what he saw. The jets disappeared, and so did those other things. They just... But you didn't see that. You only saw your scopes. Blitz, on and off. Now tell me. This is sounding more and more like electronic malfunction. That's exactly what you were sent up there to check out. Well, then Blanco Vista must have had the same malfunction we did. Yeah, and they're checking that out. Well, they better take a nose count on their jets because they are going to come up too short. We have no report of two jets missing. I'd be very happy to make one. Look, Cliff, you suffered a trick of the eye. Now, if two jets went down in that area, we'd know about it, and we don't. They didn't go down. They just went. Nothing does that. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And I'm trying to tell you that we don't deal in science fiction. <laughs> Course 
074 would have put them on this heading right here. That means they would have gone in here, hopped over these mountains. And back onto radar. Yes, but they didn't. So they must be here somewhere. But you know something? They wouldn't travel at low altitudes for very long. They must have landed. Well, not on sand. There's got to be a base, no. uh, an airstrip. Uh, wait a minute, Mike. There's, there's dirt roads here. Look, we've got a gunnery range here. We're right with an airstrip. No, they didn't get that far. Not over these mountains. Yeah. Well, no symbols. Uh, you got a base directory? Yes, it's on the shelf there. Colonel Moore. East. This is Freeman Barnes. How's it going? Lousy. Maybe if you're open tomorrow, we can have lunch. Huh? Just the two of us, a little chat. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be free. Well, then tonight, maybe. I'm very sorry. I really am busy. Can I call you back? No, look, Pete. They've sealed up Blanca Vista. A security alert? Yeah, kind of. They've pulled my radar people off the line. Why? Pete, have you got your people back yet? No. Freeman, did the alert have anything to do with that uh, radio transmission we picked up about losing contact with your jets? We've lost them. They've disappeared, vanished. What? Off the scopes without a trace. Is that why they pulled your radar people? Pete, I suppose you know this is standard procedure for UFO sightings. Why didn't you tell me about this before? Pete, I couldn't speak freely before. Yeah, well, what is the connection between that and 412? I don't know. That determination is in other hands. Whose? Special intelligence. Oh, now, you know, that's very strange. Everybody's operating on a strictly need-to-know basis. Well, I need to know more than that. Pete, I don't know how you're going to handle this, but... Well, if it ever comes up, I never made this phone call. What do you mean about radar people? Look, we're we're just trying to find our men, right? Well, I've done this. Yeah. Pullman Marine Air Station deactivated 1954. It isn't even on the map anymore. Yeah. Okay, that's my contribution. Now tell me what Barnes said. No, later. How are you at Desert Survival? We're going out there? Well, what are we going to tell the general? Well, if we do find our people, I'm going to tell him plenty. I don't know what we're going to do when we get there. We're going to get our men out. If they're there. <laughs> you think we can just uh, walk in and say, excuse me, these are mine, and walk out again? Pete, somebody went to a lot of trouble to keep this secret. Uh, that's for sure. What was Barnes talking about? Well, it seems that uh, 412 tangled with a UFO. Yeah. Pete? Hmm? Let's go back. The men are okay. I know they are. How do you know that? Because I was involved in something like this two years ago, UFO situation. And what happened? Oh, they really raked us over the coal. They convinced us that we didn't see a thing. And they made it perfectly clear we were involved in the national security situation. Oh, come on. Well, look, I know how you feel about the men. I respect you for that. But I'm telling you, back off now. For my own good, I can't back off now. When Blanca Vista told you to check that sector, you didn't question them at all? No. It's not my job to do that. But you could have asked them. Hey, fellas, what are we looking for? It's obvious they wanted an independent observation. Obvious to you, maybe. Isn't that right, Bishop? When are you guys going to feed us? We'll get around to it. Ferguson, how did you get into the Air Force Academy? I was appointed. Congressman, you like what you do? Sure. Is he any good at it? He's excellent. And how do you think he achieved this uh, level of excellence? My training. The United States government laid out a lot of money for that training. 
I appreciate it. That's good. Because when you got through the academy, Ferguson, amongst other things, you became an officer and a gentleman. Yes, he did. And where is all this leading to? You're told, and it's the truth, that you're the best this country has to offer. All that's required is that you measure up. To what? The primary obligation of a military officer. Which is? Bishop, what are your laws, these lie? You questioning my integrity? Not at all. Just your level of cooperation. With what? What am I supposed to cooperate with? Why don't you get to the point? He can't. He's not questioning our integrity. He's asking us to dispense with it. Aren't you? All right, Bishop. How did you get into the academy? Hey, fellas. Coffee? Sandwiches? Help yourself. Mr. Keir is here. Hey, listen, listen, I'll trade you my bologna for a soda. <laughs> hey, thanks. Okay, who saw the flying saucers? <laughs> well, who saw them? Cliff? Oh, no, I, uh, no, I didn't. Tony? I, I, I just saw some blips. Good, good. Then we can dispense with that, huh? What about the jets that were dispensed with? Uh-uh, unconfirmed. Hey, how come you guys won't buy a story? How come, hmm? Because it sounds just like a story. And we've dealt with these things before. Qualified people making unqualified statements. And what you thought you saw couldn't happen. There's no evidence to make us believe that it could. So, you didn't see it. Why don't you finish that sentence? We don't get out of here until we swallow that, right, Buster? The only thing I'm going to swallow is coffee. Hey, Bullseye! Hey! How much longer do we have to put up with this? I don't know. Maybe we don't have to. This is a restricted area. You get that light out of my face. Sorry, sir, this is a restricted area. I'm Colonel Moore, this is Major Dunning. The 458. I suggest that you call whoever's in charge here and tell them if he has two additional guests. He'll understand what I mean. I've got a Colonel Moore and a Major Dunning here at the main gate, sir. Send them in. 
A malfunction, yeah, just say that. Just write it down. Malfunction. I, I don't care, okay? That's pretty generous. No, the whole thing was a malfunction. From the time we left Whitney to the time we got here, it's just one great big malfunction. I'm Troutman. I'd like to see some ID. Oh, you would? Well, we'd like to see some of yours. What can I do for you, Colonel? You're holding four of my men. So? This, this whole act here wouldn't be because of a UFO sighting now, would it? It's a UFO situation, Colonel. When these things occur, it's policy to check out all the personnel involved. What do you mean, check out? Piece the whole thing together. Oh, I see. You're, um, you're investigating, is that it? We're talking to your men. Can I see them? Not just yet. When? Colonel, this is a matter of national security. Oh, oh come on. That's getting to be a very thin umbrella. No, I know about national security, mister. But you can't put that label on everything. We get these assignments all the time. It's routine. Routine or not, I'm not leaving here without my men. Well, in that case, one of the two of you make yourselves comfortable. I'll have some coffee sent in. We'll have your men out as soon as possible. And how long will that be? As long as it takes. Involved with two years ago, SID. Now he's probably on the phone right now to end right telling him what a pair of clowns we are. If you need me, I'll be in the comm truck. All I have to do is to get to the aircraft, raise Whitney on the radio, and the colonel can do the rest. If someone comes. Don't rock the boat, don't make waves. You figure that's the way that majors get to be colonels. A certain lieutenant I knew stuck his nose in two years ago where it didn't belong. The lieutenant is now a shoe salesman in Cincinnati. That kind of advancement in life I don't need. You're concerned about your position. That's right. Well, I'm concerned about more than that. Center. This is Digger Control. This is Trotman. Pass me through to Digger Command. Hello. Yes. Put him through. Trotman. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to bother you. But we've had a development out here that required my own initiative. I thought you should be notified. Now, go on. arrived at the front gate, demanded entry. I'm holding him right now in an interrogation room. You ordered this? Well, yes, sir. The circumstances dictated it. If I had refused them entry, they may have gone to another authority. Yes, I see. Well, then you did well, Trotman. How are things going with that crew? Well, we just about finished with the men, and we should have all of the contradictory evidence we need by tomorrow morning. You're very efficient, Trotman. Uh, just remember, no violence. I wouldn't dream of it, sir. You hear anything? Yeah. At 
least one of them has some guts. I'll tell Trotman. This should be interesting. to go to my aircraft. We just want to get the hell out of here, okay? Just the hell out. 
Whatever you want us to say, do, write, whatever. We'll do it. All right? But anything you want. You want us to sign anything? Anything, record anything, we'll agree to anything. Now, we're getting somewhere. Okay, Roy, let's change the subject, shall we? If you got an order, from the proper channels, prohibiting you from discussing matters pertaining to national security. Would you obey it? Of course. What is your attitude about such an order? <coughs> orders are orders. We know that. I want an opinion. the Air Force would have a pretty good reason. A practical reason? Oh, why don't you just, just give me an order? What's that? I'm Air Force! I'm not some wild-eyed kook looking to get on a 6 o'clock news. Do you understand? You don't have to try to convince me. Just give me an order, something on paper, something I can show my men. We're speaking hypothetically. No, you weren't! You want me to shut up? Give me an order! No, that's not it at all. I want an order now! Sit down. Sit down. Tell Colonel Morty how his men back now. All right, let's go. had my men for 18 hours. Now they're mine. Now Dunning and I are going to fly them out of here. Well, that'll be fine. I'll see that your car gets back to Whitney. Control disappeared as easily as it had come into existence, leaving Pete Moore a choice. He didn't hesitate. What do we tell General Enright? Now, don't worry about it. I'm going in with him. Pete, huh? I wish you'd drop it. For your sake. Now, now, don't throw away a career for some lousy UFO. That's not what it's about. No? Then what? Oh, for one thing, I'd say, uh, I'd say sanctions. 
Sanction? Yeah, the sanction. Yeah, this, this whole setup here. You know, those men were ordered to work my people over, and I'm going to find out who and why. Look, Colonel. Yeah? I, uh, I'm not going to see anybody about anything. So just give the general my regards. All right? How are you feeling? Oh, a little tired. Yeah. What's all this? At ease, man. Well, General, I'm going to tell you the wildest story you've ever heard. I've just read it. Now, Pete, I knew you had initiative, but uh, you fellas look like you've been pulled through a wine press. Is that Trotman's report? Yes, it is. What do you think? Well, very thorough. Quite an investigation. Oh, yes, it was thorough. But there was no investigation. It's all here. Yeah, the men are here. 412 is here. The report is here. But where are the two Marine jets? <laughs> what Marine jets? The ones I saw disappear, sir. You are... Uh... Captain Riggs, sir. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I see nothing here about two jets. And, sir, you're right in the middle of a con job. I see. Captain, you did mention this during the investigation. At least once every half hour, sir. Excuse me, gentlemen. Will you uh, wait inside? Yes, sir. You know Colonel Moore and these men? Yes, sir. Colonel. Is this report complete? Yes, sir. Not one detail has been left out? No, sir. Well, I see no mention here of a visual sighting on the disappearance of two Marine jets scrambled by Black Vista. What about that, Colonel? Those are, uh, reports are under a separate cover, sir. You mean to say you couldn't connect one with the other? Of course I did. Oh, you did? Well, why didn't you do something about it? That's not my job, Colonel. Well, wait a minute. Those two missing jets, they, they are confirmed? Yes, sir. When? Yesterday, about 12.45. Yesterday? Then why did you hold my men all that time? You know, those reports were probably written one hour after you started questioning them. My orders dictate my methods. Oh. When I get my orders, Captain, I follow them. 
The last time I heard that, it came from the docket at Nuremberg. I wouldn't make hasty comparisons. Just what are your orders, Colonel? To intimidate, to bend, to distort the truth so that nobody would recognize it after you're finished with it? General, what? You know the policy. I don't. What is the policy? To investigate any sightings of unidentified flying objects by Air Force personnel and determine the accuracy of those sightings. Yes. And what do you do about it? The reports are sent up. Sent up to who? That's classified. You know, I'm not a scientist, and neither are you. But it seems to me that you've got to sort of take a, a scientific approach to this. Either you prove these things exist, or you prove they don't exist. But you don't pretend they're not there. Now, who sees these reports? Pete, you're entering an area that doesn't concern you. Oh, Jeff, I'm, I'm drawing a line here, and you don't cross over it. What line? Policy? Colonel, we don't set the policy. We act on it. We make our reports, and that's it. Any action to be taken comes from somewhere else. Where? Will you men please wait outside? Sit down. Frankly, Pete, the Air Force doesn't have the time or the funds for tracking down flying saucers. Yes, but they do have the funds to maintain places like Digger Base. Look, sir, my men told their story as straight as they could based on what they saw. Or thought they saw. It doesn't make any difference, really. Of course. How? You get a directive that tells you what to do, gives you no latitude at all, and you know what you are. You're nothing but a laundry processor. Pete, we don't need any of that. General, what this man does is pointless. And by instinct, I know that his attitude doesn't serve the interests of this country, its people, or its government. Colonel, officers are not supposed to act on instinct. They act on orders, and yours are to lay off. Colonel Carson. Thank you. Really? If you're going to be noble, why don't you do it over something worthwhile? Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm just as concerned over this as you are. Yeah. More so. What I'm going to show you now is strictly off the record. It is not to leave this room. all we found of the missing marine jets. Well, where was this? About 80 miles east of Blanca Vista. But where are the crews? We're still looking. Did Trotman know about this? He didn't need to. It has nothing to do with his job. General, does this sort of cover-up go on all the time? Eight. Now, look at that picture. That's the only piece of wreckage we've got. That's it. That's all there is. There's no way in the world we can explain this. And it's not the policy of the military to create panic. General, what are we creating? Waiting. You hungry? No, thanks. Colonel, we're sorry that we made things rough for you. For me? Yeah, we've talked it over, sir. This whole thing, it just isn't worth it. We'll drop it if you say something, sir. No, don't do that. Remember, policies change. Yeah. Yeah, but not attitudes. But they don't last forever. Only as long as they're expedient. Pete 
Moore would have pursued the disappearance of Flight 412 if he could have found some place to pursue it. No one cared. And the only reason he could ever find why they didn't care was because they were afraid to cope with it, even when it happened again. Four months later, a similar exercise. This time, everyone was there from the top down. Planes scrambled. Objects were sighted. Everyone was a witness. It made no difference. Everyone was debriefed, the file closed, the incident forgotten, much as was Flight 412. The fate of the men concerned with 412 has been curious indeed. Major Dunning was promoted to colonel. Lieutenant Fedriski, in return for his cooperation, was advanced to captain and is presently serving a three-year tour in the Pentagon. Captain Bishop is still a captain and is serving a two-year tour in the Canal Zone. Pete Moore was passed over three times for promotion and retired at minimum age.